you are looking at the official CERN website of the Large Hadron Collider and its multiple experiments, which right now this is what CERN is concerned with or focused on. Now, if we just start by looking at the logo, many people have pointed out that there are three sixes in this logo. And it looks like there are two circles and uh, a bunch of corresponding lines that can easily make a six or three sixes or even more without uh, much imagination. Now, uh, most of you know that 666 is a symbolic sign for Satan, the devil. Now, if we look here at the CERN website, people have been concerned that they're going to open some portal to the gates of hell. And they've been, the scientists themselves have been saying that they plan on opening up other dimensions, wormholes, gateways, stargates. And if we look here, they are obsessed with the occult, with the supernatural, with the ethereal, with the uh, uh, information that science traditionally has shunned away. Science traditionally would not have anything to do with angels and demons. Science traditionally wouldn't have anything to do with stargates or portals or anything like this. Now all this is coming out and the science and religion are merging. And this is the highest form of science because the Large Hadron Collider is the largest machine, most complex machine, most expensive machine that humans have ever built. Now if we look here on their website, now here's from the movie Angels and Demons and let's watch because what they're telling you is relevant to the reality that they are interested in and are creating whether you give it any credence or not the top scientists in the world are giving it credence because they're putting it on their official CERN website let's watch together Where is that camera number 86? It's wireless. It too was stolen. It could be anywhere inside the Vatican walls. That canister contains an extremely combustible substance called antimatter. We need to locate it immediately or evacuate Vatican City. I'm quite familiar with incendiaries, Ms. Vetra. I've never heard of antimatter being used as such. Well, it's never been generated in significant quantities before. It's a way of studying the origins of the universe to try to isolate what some people call the God particle. But there are implications for energy the research. God particle? What we call it isn't important. It's what gives all matter mass, the thing without which we could not exist. You're talking about the moment of creation. Yes, in a way I am. The antimatter is suspended there in an airtight nanocomposite shell with electromagnets on each end. But if it were to fall out of suspension and come in contact with matter, say, at the bottom of the canister, then the two opposing forces would annihilate one another violently. And what might cause it to fall out of suspension? The battery going dead which it will, in six hours. What kind of annihilation? How violent? A cataclysmic event. A blinding explosion equivalent to about five kilotons. Vatican City will be consumed by life. So here they're showing you the angels and demons and the god particle, as they call it in CERN. And why do they call it the god particle? I mean, the idea of science is that God doesn't exist and the premise begins from there in their research and here they're trying to uh, bring God down to a particle and so it's all uh, religious all of this is very religious but it's anti-biblical religious anti-creator of the universe 
And if we look deeper into the uh, CERN uh, uh, website, uh, we're going to see what uh, what they're doing here at CERN in terms of their experiments. And you, they have a new picture all the time. This is a particle collision simulation. What happens to particles after they collide and this is the experiments at CERN. Well, some information about CERN, Lodge, uh, the LHC, and here are the experiments. Now, this is what's important because the LHC, the Large Hadron Collider, is basically a beam that goes around a huge 27 kilometer circle, and off that beam are experiments which will send that beam into these experiments for detection and collision or whatnot. And so here are the experiments. You have the Atlas experiment, which to me right now is the most interesting. Perhaps that's because that's the one I've done the uh, research with some uh, eye-opening results. So this is the picture of the Atlas experiment. And if we look at uh, Atlas, the uh, website itself, uh, we're going to see that they're including Atlas in all kinds of culture. And we'll see here in this presentation that, uh, let me turn down this volume that here you have all this symbolism and everybody's dancing around this Atlas Collider waiting for the devil or somebody to come through, uh, Shiva or what have you. Let's uh, go back here. You see all these robes? You see all these Freemason symbols, right? That's telling you who's controlling all this stuff. and. This is put on the official CERN Atlas website. Now, so you see the CERN logo. They can only use the logo because it is an experiment of CERN. So this is CERN Experiment Atlas. Now, look at the logo. Here is why it's important. The uh, Rockefeller Center... Now, the Atlas statue at the Rockefeller Center was installed in 1937. The old images of Atlas are him holding up the globe. Here, it is depicted that he's holding up the worlds, holding the heavens, and installed in 1937. And the... Uh, interesting thing about it is the first accelerator started in around 1930s, early 30s, and so apparently they knew back then that an accelerator is going to get them into a new world because if anybody is in the know, it certainly would be the uh, Rockefellers. And if you were to look up uh, the Shiva statue at CERN, Here's what you're going to see. And what you see here, basically it's the image of what Atlas is holding up. You see the portal? That's the portal, and inside the portal are these other worlds. So here's the portal that Atlas is holding up, and if you see what they plan on coming out of that portal, it is this, and that is the destroyer of worlds. And they are hailing this, as I mentioned before, uh, with the uh, uh, shows and celebrations to hail in the coming of the uh, whoever's going to enter into that portal, which they expect to be Shiva. And the interesting thing about this is 
portal technology has been known about since ancient times. Now here we see the director of the entire CERN project meeting with the directors of Sesame, which is an affiliate of CERN. And if people are familiar with Alibaba and the 40 Thieves, Sesame, Open Sesame, is a harmonic tone that opens portals. Let me just uh, go to the Sesame website here. And so you can see for yourself, this is the facility. It is a major facility. Last time I looked at this, they had a blue roof. It looks like they painted it white. And uh, their architecture and everything looks uh, uh, very interesting uh, if you look at this in a Google satellite map. Now, for those of you who don't remember what Sesame is, let me just show you. The uh, uh, open uh, Sarsaparilla, uh, open Saskatchewan, the uh, uh, open Septuagenarian, the uh, open uh, Saddle Soap, the uh, open Sesame. So basically, what you saw there is that. Sesame opens a portal, and this is Open Sesame, or Sesame, and they plan to be in operation by 2016, uh, operating uh, uh, CERN uh, projects. Now here CERN itself says that they are a gateway to the universe. And if you remember, the Bible says that the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church and perhaps it was referring to this sort of gateway that is going to open up the gates of hell. Here they're saying the Large Hadron Collider and facilities for the production of exotic forms of matter including antimatter. Okay, now we're going to get to the creepy part. This is a hieroglyph of an Egyptian boat that takes you from this world to the next world, uh, Boat of the Dead. Now, here are the people uh, taking the uh, person to the next world, and here are the people receiving the one coming into the next world. Now, if you look at this image here, it's pointing that direction. Uh, it's kind of like these funnels here and these funnels are receiving those funnels are sending and so it's as if you go inside this funnel go all the way through and come out this funnel you see there's a person coming out of this funnel here and somebody's made this observation on this website about wormholes and stargates and we can see if we go down here and here's a close-up of the person coming out of this funnel. But here's the interesting part. Look at this. Count the symbols. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's two more here you can't see. That'll be eight. Then if we go here to the Atlas uh, portal, I'll call it. I'll just go ahead and call it what I think it is. This is a portal. And you see that there are eight elements corresponding with the uh, uh, eight elements that we see here, which is part, apparently, of a portal. And if we dig deeper, uh, there have uh, this is how portals and wormholes are, are done. Uh, they, you go in one side and come out the other side. This is an interesting article. I'm going to leave a link to it. And... Uh, you drop down here, you see this is a picture of the Alice experiment. Like, remember Alice in Wonderland? Alice went into a, a portal that brought her into a different world. And here, something is coming out of the portal. They have the uh, demigod Shiva doing the cosmic destroyer dance. 